Okay, so in this uh, video lecture, we're going to uh, discuss section 1.1. Uh, that is on functions and function notation. Uh, so here are the items we're going to go through. We're going to first define what a function is, right? rather, rather what a relation is, okay? and then uh, determine whether a relation represents a function. Okay? And then we'll look at um, how to evaluate a function. Okay, so once we define what a function is, uh, then we'll look at some examples on evaluating those. And then we want to know, right, whether a function is one-to-one, -one, okay? Um, and then finally, we'll look at a, uh, we'll look at the vertical line test, okay? Uh, which is kind of a visual, it's a visual way to determine whether a graph is a, is a function or not, okay? Okay, so let's first, uh, define what a relation is because um, we need to know what relations are before we can actually define what a function is. Okay, so okay, so very first definition. Okay, so a relation is basically. It's a set of ordered pairs. Okay. So in other words, it's a collection of ordered pairs. Okay, and we'll go through, um, I'll show you an example in a few minutes. Okay. So the set Okay, so the set of first components of each ordered pair is called a domain. Okay. And the second Second component each ordered pair is called a range. Okay, we got some important terms in here. So relation, domain, and range. Okay, so let me let's illustrate this with a with an example. Okay, so going to list out some ordered pairs. We have one, two, two, four, three, six, four, eight, five, ten. Okay, notice the notation here. Okay, so I'm using curly braces here. And we have, in this case, we have five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, five ordered pairs, okay? So here's your ordered pairs, right? And so basically this is what's called a relation, okay? So you could have, so the number number of ordered pairs doesn't matter. You could have just one ordered pair. Uh, you could have 10, you could have as many as you want, right? Okay, so, but the collection, right? This represents a collection of ordered pairs. So this is what we call a relation, right? Okay. All right, so based on this, uh, the domain, okay. so remember, so the domain is the first component, right? It's a set of first components of each of the ordered pair, okay? So in this case, 
in our example here, okay, the domain would just be the first member of each ordered pair. So this, this number, this number, this number, this number, and this number. Okay. okay. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So that represents the domain for this relation. The, the range, the range is the second member okay, of each ordered pair. So this, right? So this one, so two, four, six, eight, and 10. Okay, so the thing to observe here, right? The, the important thing is that um, domain, right? Domain goes to range, right? So one goes to two, two goes to four, three goes to six, four is to eight, five is to 10, okay? So again, domain is the first member of each ordered pair. Range is the second member of each ordered pair, okay? Okay, so this, when we, uh, if we take a look at the coordinate, okay? so the coordinate is generally represented like this. Okay, so you have whatever, and I'm going to use triangle here. So the triangle is your represents the first member. Okay, so that is in your domain, and the, the the square is just the range. Okay, so so generally speaking, this is how we represent a coordinate. Okay. Sometimes, right, we use, sometimes we use this kind of notation, x, y. Okay, so x comma y. So the important thing here is that this, right, this correlates to your independent variable, and this correlates to your dependent variable. A dependent variable, and this one is your dependent variable. Okay. Sometimes we say that this is the input value. So you can think of this as the input. This is the output. Okay. Okay. So general, right? Independent variable. Okay. Dependent variable. Okay. Okay. So with that, we can go ahead and define what a function is. Okay, so a function, right? A function is a relation that assigns, okay, single value in the range to each value in the domain. Okay, so the key here is that this part right here assigns a single value in the range to each value in the domain. Okay, so no, right? And I'm going to put this in quotes, the X, because sometimes we don't always use X for an independent variable. And I will I'll elaborate on that uh, in a few minutes, okay? But no, there's no uh, X values. Okay, 
In other words, there's no independent variables that are repeated. Okay, so let me let me uh, elaborate on this. So sometimes we call this a kidney diagram because these look like kidneys, okay? And they're used a lot to just show the relationship between uh, this set and this set. By the way, this is this is your this collection is the domain and this is the range, okay? So let's look at a few. Uh, let's say we have a few elements in there, a few points. Okay. okay. So I'm going to say this is P. Q and R. And over here, we have M and N. So, yes, yeah, so not obviously they're not numbers, but it, the, uh, the principle is the same. Okay. So the idea is that okay, if, if, if this is, if we're saying that this is a function, then this, uh, then uh, this may happen. Okay. So P goes to M. Okay. Q. Right, Q goes to right, so Q goes to N and R goes to N. Okay, so in that scenario, right, in this kind of case that you see here, um, this actually is a function, okay, because each right each one of these is paired up with one of these in the right in this set. Okay, so in other words, let's so let's look at this uh, in terms of the ordered pairs. Okay, so the ordered pairs for this. Be P, so P, right? So P goes to M, right? Going back to this idea, okay? So domain, right? Domain range. So P goes to M, Q goes to N, and R goes to N. So looking at this uh, collection of ordered pairs, we can see that there, there are no repeating values. Okay, in in your domain, right? So so P, Q, and R. Okay. So even though Q and R they go to the same value of N, that's fine. They're, it's these are distinct values here. Okay. So let me show you an example where it's not a function. Okay. Um, but before I do it, actually, let me show you another example of this. Then I'll show you an example that's not a function. Okay, so let's say we have, again, uh, three elements. When I say elements, that just means the points in this set. Okay. So there we have P, Q, and R, let's say. Okay. And let's say for the other side, we have, let's say, X, Y, and Z. Okay. So we can have something like that as well. Okay. So writing out the, uh, writing out the ordered pairs, okay. we have P, so P goes to X, Q goes to Y, and R goes to Z. So that is another um, that so there's another example of a function. Okay, so there are no repeated values here. Okay, for the first member, so P, Q, and R, they're distinct from each other. Okay, so now let me show you an example that's not a function. Okay, Let's see. So this time, let's suppose I have P and Q. And uh, we have X, Y, and Z over here. Okay, so P go, let's, 
let P go to X and Q is going to go to Y and Z. So let's rewrite, let's write out the ordered pairs. So we have, okay. So we have P going to X, okay. So P comma X and Q, Q is going to Y and Q is also going to Z. Okay. So, right, so we have, right, so here's the issue. Q, right, so Q is going to Y and it's going to Z. So you have repeated values here in the, in the domain. Okay. So therefore this, right, so therefore that violates the definition of a, of a function, right? So remember a function is a relation that assigns a single value in the range to each value in the domain, okay? So the problem is, right, you're getting this one and this one. If you back, if you go back this way, it's, it has the same, right, output value. So these share the same output, okay, going, going this way. Okay? So that's, that's not a function, okay? Okay. Um, so, again, these, are, these kind of scenarios are functions, and this one is not a function, okay? So with that in mind, okay, um, we can so um, not so not all relations, right? Not all relations are functions, okay? All right. Um, however, all functions are relations. So I'm going to write that out, okay? So not all relations are functions. However, all functions are relations. Very important. Okay. So, right, so every one is this, right? This one and this set, they, those are relations, okay? Okay, so, however, only these two are functions, okay? And this is not a function, okay? So, so not all relations are functions. However, every, right, however, functions, right? All functions are relations, okay? Right. So it's, so in math, sometimes like going one direction, right? So going from A to B is not necessarily the same as going from B to A. All right. Let's see. And just a, a little bit more here. This becomes so basically, um, this becomes important later on when we get ready, when we talk about what's, uh, what's called the inverse. So going from here to here, so, right, so you're going from this set to this set. So, so later we're going to talk about going from this set back to this set. So that's called the inverse, okay? All right, so we're going, to, uh, we're going to talk about that later in a separate section. Okay, let's get into um, the function notation part of this. All right, so the notation y equals to f of x. Okay, the 
defines a function named F. Okay. So we can use any letter we want here. So typically we use F for function, but it doesn't always have to be. Um, we can say Y is equal to G of X, Y equals to H of X, Y is equal to S of X. Okay, so, um, so it doesn't matter the letter. So whenever, but so whatever that letter is, that's what we define that to be. Okay, so this, so because we're using F here, so, um, so we're calling this, uh, we're naming this function F. Okay, so the way you read this is that you say Y is a function of X. Okay. So y, right? So y is a function of x. Okay, um, this just means that y depends on x. Okay, so in this kind, with this kind of notation, okay, this is your input. Okay, and then you have your output. Okay. Okay. So something probably or something you're probably wondering about is okay. If you have a number here, how does it get over here? Well, that depends on whatever the expression is for this function, okay, right? So for example, if I said, okay, let's say for example, we're working with, um, let's say f of x equals to x squared, for example, okay? So if we look at just, uh, let's say we look at the value of one, And if we, so if we put in one, right, into x squared, then obviously we get one. If we put in two, then we get two squared, which is four. If we put in minus two, we also get positive four, okay? Notice this is, so this is just, uh, this just shows a few of the, um, few of the coordinates, okay? We can put in as many x values as we want, right? In fact, that's how we develop a, a, what's called a graph for this function. We look at a few points and then and then draw uh, and then draw either a line or curve. In this case, a curve through it. Okay. So this is right. So this still right. So you can see that this is a uh, this is still a function. Okay. Okay. So again, right. So x right. So this is your x. These are your x values. Okay, so your, your domain values, okay, this is everything in here is our domain, so this is all x, and then over here, this becomes y. So, okay, so you can think of this, some, or a way to think about this, input, right, and then you have your output, and it's getting from, the numbers are going from here to here through this expression, okay? So, like I said earlier, um, we don't always use x and y. Okay, uh, especially in calculus, uh, a lot of times we use different variables. So let me show you some of those. Yep, so we don't always use X and Y. So for example, okay, right, we could have P equals to W W of D, or we could have S equals to M of T. Or let's say um, Z equals to let's say uh, let's say Q of R. Say for example. Okay. So this is. All, so all this is, is function notation, okay? And so the important, so the reason this is important because when it's written this way, we can clearly identify which one, is, which component is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable, okay? So going back to the, going back to the ordered pair, right? This, the ordered pair would look like this. So D comma P, okay? So we would say that, Okay, uh, we would say that P, right, 
P is a function, right? So P is a function of T. S is a function of T. Z is a function of R. So, so D comma P, T comma S, and then R comma Z. Okay. Okay. So you have your so in here, right? In the parentheses, this is your independent values, right? And then your your output is the dependent values here. Okay. So a lot of times, like I said, we don't always use X and Y because sometimes in like in physics or or, or engineering, sometimes we our independent variable is time. So T, T for time. Okay. So um, so it's very important to understand how this works. All right, let's look at some specific examples on how to evaluate, right, on evaluating a function. And by the way, we're going to we're going to look at so so this is this is one kind of function. We're going to look at several others and then look, uh, we'll take a careful look at uh, what those functions look like. Okay. Um, this is all just make a, uh, focusing on uh, the, uh, what a function is and uh, some, of its, some of its notation. Okay. All right. Let's, so let's look at some examples on evaluating a function. Minus. Okay, so we have this function x squared plus 3x minus 4. Okay. And we want to evaluate this at, at first, we want to evaluate at 2. At a and at a plus h. Okay. So one thing to keep in commerce. Sorry, one thing to keep in mind here, okay, is that the X is just kind of like a placeholder, okay? So X could be, this input could be anything. It could be a number, it could be a variable, it could be expression, it could be anything you want, okay? So the idea is whatever you put in there, it's telling that, right? It's basically saying, okay, that's your input. So the output of that value, okay, the output of that, um, either it's a value or expression, um, is going to be determined by this, okay? So sometimes it may, it, it may be helpful um, to view the function like this. So, right, the box represents the input. So whatever you put in here, okay, that's what you're going to do for each, for each space. Okay, so for each of the x values. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Okay, so we want to right, we want to evaluate this function at two. Okay, so we have f of two. Okay, so f of two, two goes into there. Three times two minus four. Okay, so we're gonna get four. Okay, so. 2 squared is 4, uh, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 4. So we're going to end up getting 6. Okay. So what does this mean conceptually? All it means is that, okay, the point 2, right, uh, the value of 2 is getting mapped or getting transferred over to 6. Okay. So again, think about it in terms of these diagrams. 
So your function, right? This is the function, this is the specific function we're working with. So the value of two, right, is getting mapped, right? Sometimes so so I said the term map, sometimes we call it, sometimes we call that process called mapping. Okay. But so the, the idea is that two is getting Okay, two is your input and then six is your output. Okay. So your ordered pair, so the specific ordered pair looks like this. So two comma six. Okay, so again, right? So input, output. And that's what's giving, you, this is what's um, causing your values here to go from here to here. Okay. All right, um, let's look at uh, the second part. So f of b, all right, first, and I'm sorry, so that's a, so f of b. That's part b, okay, so part b, we want to evaluate the function at, at a. So f of a, okay. So same idea here, but the only difference is that this is a number, right? This is a, you know, like a variable, okay? So, but same idea, we're going to plug a into here. So a squared, okay, then plus three times a, minus four, okay? And that's all we can do. That's all we can do because we're working with a letter here. Okay, so let's look at C. So C says we want to evaluate, okay? So we're gonna evaluate that function at A plus H. Okay, so again, this is your, right? Uh, that's your input, remember. The input could be a number, it could be a, could be a letter, it could be an ex expression. Okay, like this one. So A plus H, right, is going to go into here. I've got A plus H squared plus three times A plus H, okay, minus four, right? So, all right, so that's squared, right, plus three times A plus H and minus four. So what we should do here is we should, uh, um, Go ahead and expand this out, okay. uh, because if, on the next example we're going to uh, we're going to need we're going to use this. Okay. So let's go ahead and expand that out now. Let's see. All right. So by the way, okay, a plus h squared. Okay, so let's do that. I'll do this in a different color. A plus A squared, that is, okay, so um, that is not the same, okay, and right over here. This is not equal to this, okay? That's a big, uh, that's a common mistake I see in a lot of students, um, okay? So this, okay, this is what's called a binomial, right? So actually what this is equal to is this. So you have two of them, right? Uh, likewise, right? If you if we have a plus h cubed, okay, that is equal to a plus h times a plus h times another a plus h. So you have one, two, three, okay. So you can't you can't put in the power in here, right? Uh, because of the plus. Okay. So let's. Okay, so let's apply that here. So a plus h squared is going to be right, a plus h times another right, times another a plus h. Okay, so let's do let's let's work out that there, and then we'll plug it back in. All right, so let's do that here. So the the, the way to view this, all right, is that, okay, you first distribute the A, okay? So I'm going to write that step out. So this is the same as A times A plus H plus the second one, plus H times A plus H. So what you're, so what you're using here is what's called the distributed property, right? Okay, so A, right, so you cover, right, so you 
basically just focus on A, right? And then you distribute it to here. And then you cover A up and then you're gonna distribute H over A plus H, okay? All right, so this, so first you're gonna get A squared okay, plus A times H plus H times A plus A uh, plus A squared, okay? So basically I'm just distributing here. So this, okay, so this is an algebra thing. This is a, so this is a preliminary that you have to know. You're gonna be using that all throughout the course, okay? And by the way, A times H, right, is the same as H times A. So it's like saying four times two is the same thing as two times four, right? So we can go ahead and combine these. This is just A squared plus two times AH plus H squared. So that part is equal to just this, okay? All right. So now let's finish this part up. So we have a squared plus 2ah plus h squared, okay? Plus, okay, this remaining part, okay? So that is, okay, so we can distribute the three. So it's going to be 3a plus 3h minus 4. And I'll write that a little bit better. So 3h minus 4, okay? And so... We try to see if we can combine anything, right? We try to combine like terms, but um, there's nothing here uh, that we can combine. Okay. So again, right? So we, we take A plus H squared, we work out that detail here, and then we do the rest of it right here. Okay, and so that's the result. Okay. Okay, so putting everything together, right? Okay, going back to here, If we were to look at this as an ordered pair, this is just going to be a comma a squared plus three a minus four. Okay. And then for this one, okay, the ordered pair, okay, the ordered pair for this one is going to be a plus h comma okay, all this. So there's our right, so there's our input and this gives us our output. Okay. All right. So let's look at the uh, next question here. The next one is kind of like I said, um, the next one is using this result. Okay. See. Okay. So this time, okay, we want to evaluate this expression, okay? So we have, right, given this function, okay? So we have a, a piece here, piece here, and then we have to divide everything by H. Notice, right, uh, these pieces that was computed in our first example. So here is F of A plus H, okay? We have, we've, already, we've already worked that part out. F of A, we did here. So now what we're gonna do is combine this, okay? Right. And by the way, this is this kind of expression we're gonna talk about later, okay? Um, it's what's called a finite, a finite difference quotient, okay? So you don't have to know that now, but we are going to discuss this. And this is kind of the, um, this is used um, to define what's called the derivative, uh, which is a, um, which is the main topic in calculus, okay? And so, uh, we have to be used to working with these forms, okay? So let's go ahead and just uh, work this problem out. 
So f of a plus h, we already got that. Okay, so let's write that out. Make sure that's showing up here. Okay, so a squared plus 2a. So I'm just taking the result from here that we did earlier. Okay. So this part, okay, minus f of a. Okay, so f of a was here. Okay, so you have to be really careful. Okay, because if you put, if you don't put parentheses around this part, okay, if you don't put parentheses around this, then this is wrong, right? Because the minus here is affecting everything in here. So you should always put either parentheses or brackets to, to kind of remind yourself to, uh, to distribute that negative sign. Okay, so again, this is, right, so this is this part right here. That's this result. Okay. This part, f of a, that is this, okay, which we did over here. And then we divide everything by h, okay? So this is, this is given to us. This is what we want to evaluate given this function, okay? So we did all that. So now the rest of it, okay, is just to, um, is that we have to simplify it. And for any time we have these kind of expressions here, okay, um, something will always, simp so something will always cancel out. And then, um, and then eventually this H will cancel out, okay? So that's, uh, that's what you're gonna notice happen. So let's go ahead and distribute this minus sign. So distributing the negative sign, right? So you have minus, this becomes negative, right? And this becomes positive. Okay. And so, you know, and then, right? And then everything divided by H. Okay. So this is, so cool, equal. So you can see that A squares will cancel out. We have an A squared here and an A minus A squared, that's zero. 3a minus 3a is 0, okay, and minus 4 plus 4 is 0. So like I said, things will cancel out for this kind of, for this kind of expression here. And what you notice is that each term that's remaining has an h in it, okay? We have 2ah plus h squared plus 3h over, okay, all divided by h. Now, what we can do is because we have an H in each term, we can factor out an H. So let's do that. So we have H times 2A plus H plus 3. Again, so I can I have a 1H here. I can factor that out. I factor out one of these. That leaves an H. And then you have 3 left. And then all divided by H. And H over H is 1. We can cancel those out. So that will leave us with 2a plus h plus 3. Okay. So that is our uh, that is our solution. Okay. okay. So sometimes, so like I said, this expression is used. Um, it's it's inter it's basically used um, uh, in the concept of derivatives. So you have to be able to be comfortable with working with this kind of algebra, okay? Okay. All right. So let's look at some other examples here.
So let's say we're given this function. And we want to evaluate h of four. Okay, so here, okay, again, we don't always have to work with, um, we don't have to always work with f. We have a, right, we have a function h here. And p, right, p is the independent variable here. Okay, so again, same idea, right? This is your input, okay? We put it into here, and that will give us our output. Okay, so let's do that. H of H of four, so we get four squared plus two times four. Okay, so four squared, we all know, right? That's four times four, which is sixteen. Okay, and then uh, sixteen plus eight will be twenty-four. Okay, so conceptually, that just means that four, right? Four is the the x value, 24 is the y value, right? So, okay, so four comma 24 is the, is these, is one of the coordinates for this function. Okay, uh, let's look at another one. So let's say we're given a different function. Okay, so we want to evaluate this function at five. So nothing new here, just uh, just working with a different expression. Okay, so m, right? So right, m in this case right, is your independent variable. So five is so five is your input, right? G of five equals to square root of five minus four, which gives us square root one, just one. Okay? So that means. For this particular function, you have right five goes to one, so that's a that's the ordered pair. That's a, one of the ordered pairs for this function. Just like up here, uh, four comma twenty four is the ordered pair. It's one of the ordered pairs for this function. Right? Okay, next example. Let's see. Okay, so let's suppose this time we're given so we're given h of p, right? So this is a function that depends on p. So p squared plus two times p. And we want to solve for h of p equals to three. So this time, okay, we are given the output value, okay, and we want to find what the corresponding input value is. So going back to this scenario, right, or going back to this kind of diagram, so this time we have h, right? So we're given, okay, we're given the value of three here. And we want to figure out, okay, what is the value here? So what is the value in the, right, in the uh, domain, okay? Okay, so let's, let's do that. Okay, so what you do, okay, so here's our function, p squared plus 2p. Right? So you're going to set this equal to 3, right? Because that is your output. Okay, so we want to figure out, okay, what is, uh, what, is uh, what is p, right? Such that when you plug, when you plug those into here, okay, what number when you plug into here will give you 3. That's what we want to find. Okay. And there, 
and um, there could be one, there could be two, right? So, um, so let's work that out. Okay. So here's something else that students uh, sometimes, um, or sometimes they make a little mistake on. They they'll do something like this. Okay. They'll say, um, yeah, they'll factor a p out, which is fine. Okay. That's certainly that's you know, that is legitimate. That is, that's fine. So, but then what they'll do is they'll set, okay? They'll say, okay, they'll say like P equals three and then P plus two is equal to three. And that is, okay, that is not correct. Okay, that is not, not the correct way to do it. Okay, so this is totally wrong, okay? You can't, so we, so this is, we can't do this. All right, so that's not the correct approach, okay? So here's what, here's what you should do. So what you should do is always move everything over. Um, and basically set everything equal to zero. Okay. So the way we do that is we can move the three over. In other words, subtract three from both sides. And so now, now we can try and factor the, the left-hand side here, okay? So we have, all right, so here, Okay, so here's where you need to use an algebra skills, right? So we have a minus three there, okay? okay. Um, so we have P, okay? So first of all, we need a P here and P here so that when we multiply this, we get P squared, okay? The next thing is we have to figure out a okay, what two numbers go here. And that's gonna depend on, that's gonna depend on the factors of this negative three. So we need to find two factors, right? In other words, two numbers that would such that when you multiply them gives us negative three, but at the same time, um, the sum of those two numbers gives us two. Okay, so thinking about this, you think of, you come up with uh, three and let's say three and one, right? So three times one is three, but we need a negative, right? So, okay, so we can put the negative there, okay? Negative three times one is certainly negative three, but the problem is that when you add these, you get minus two, not plus two. So we need to put the negative down here. So now three minus one, right, is gonna be two. And when you multiply these, three times negative one is negative three. So those values, right, right these two values are gonna go into here. So we have plus three and then minus one. And it doesn't matter the order. You could say, um, you can put minus one here and, and three here, okay? So it doesn't matter. Right? It works out the same. And in fact, you can check your answer, right? So P times P is P squared. You get P times negative one, right? Plus three, so three P minus P is two P. And then three times negative one is minus three. So this will allow us to solve it now because we can set each of these since we have a product here, so we just need to figure out what makes those equal to zero. So we have P plus three okay, equal to zero or P minus one equal to zero, okay? So that's pretty simple to solve, right? P is gonna be equal to negative three okay, or okay, we have P equals to one. So in this case, uh, there are two values in the input that go to three. So, right, so our, our, our diagram will look like this. Right? So minus three goes to three and one also goes to three. So those are, those are our two solutions. Okay. And so what this means, okay, it's actually, right, what this means is if you put minus three in there, right, so you 
get minus three, so you get nine, okay? And then minus, right, so and then you put uh, negative three here, okay? So you get nine, okay? Plus uh, minus six, because two times negative three is negative six, so nine minus six is gonna be three. And P equals one will also work. You get one, one squared plus two times one, so one plus two is gonna give you three. So sometimes we need to um, sometimes we need to evaluate a function, right? And sometimes we need to figure out what the or given the output, we need to figure out what the corresponding value in the domain is. Okay, very very important. Okay, let's look at another similar example. And by the way, that was example four. And so the next one is, let's see, oh, that was example five actually. Okay, so three, four, and five. So the next one is example six. Okay. So this time, uh, same kind of idea here. We're given an output value of, of two. Okay. So here's our, here's our function diagram. Okay. And we're given, okay. so we're given value of two in here, and we want to figure out okay, where what value such that when we put it into, when we evaluate it in G, right? Okay, so G of what will give us two? That's basically what this is asking for. Just like over here, okay? What values, uh, what values in here, when you plug them into the function will give us three, okay? So strategy, so, um, so the strategy is the same. We take that function and set it equal to this. Set it equal to two, and then we can solve for m. Okay. So how do you right? So how do we undo right? So how do we un? How do we? Um, how can we isolate m? Well, we have to undo that square root. Okay, and the and the the operation that undoes the square root is square. Right, so we square both sides. So if I square this side, I need to square this side. So it keeps everything consistent, right? It's like a balance. Okay, so that means we're gonna get M minus four equals to four, okay? And so we all know now, right, M has to be eight. So there's our solution, okay? So in fact, we can check, right? Check, we can check, check the work. So we put in square root of eight minus four. Eight minus four is four, square root of four is two. Okay, so again, just set the function equal to whatever the value they give. Okay, not too bad. Okay, the next thing is, um, okay, we need to talk about expressing an equation as a function. Okay, another very important topic.
All right, so I'm going to illustrate this uh, with an example seven. So we have an equation here, obviously, that you see, okay? So two times n plus six times p equals 12. And we want to express this as a function of n. Okay? So looking at just this part, okay? So just, if you just look at that part, we don't know, right? Uh, we don't know what the independent variable is, and we don't know what which one is the independent or dependent, okay? so. Um, okay, so if you're just given this, we, we don't know which one it is, okay? Um, so this problem is basically asking, okay, we, that we want to write or express this in this form. So because we are given this, then we automatically know, okay, they want, okay, they want this um, expression to be in terms of n, okay? And so in that case, n, right, so in this, in this form, n is the independent variable, p is the dependent variable that depends on n. So, okay, what this tells us, okay, so what we need to do, okay, is that we need to solve, we need to basically uh, solve for P. So solve for P in terms of N. Okay, and that will give us a function, right, that depends on N. By the way, this is uh, that expression there, okay? In the box, this is what's called an implicit expression. So basically that, um, that is just saying that all the, var the variables are all on one side and you have a constant over here, okay? All right, so, Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve for P in terms of N. So what we need to do is we need to isolate this P. Okay, so we move the term, right, the term within it on the other side. So we have 6P, okay, equals to minus 2N plus 12. And then we can go ahead um, and isolate P by dividing everything by 6. So now let's, so typically we break this up. This is the same as minus 2n over 6 plus 12 over 6. So that's going to give us, so, okay, so we have uh, negative 2 over 6. That becomes negative 1 third. So we have minus 1 third n plus 12 over 6 we know is 2. All right, so there it is. There's, right, we have P, right, in terms of N, okay? So this is the same, right, so the same thing as saying this. So now you can clearly, right, we can clearly see, okay, based on this, we can clearly see that N, right, N, or N is being treated as the independent variable. And P, right, P is your, uh, P is going to be your, Function. Oh, sorry, using F here. So this should be F. Right. Okay. I'm using F here, so that's F of N. Okay. So, so, so N, right? So when you put in, when you put that to the function, that gives you back P. Okay. So P is the output. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Yeah, so so this is important. The reason well, the reason this is important is because uh, sometimes we're working with applications and we need to put uh, we need to write the function in terms of time. Okay, um, and by the way, this is called the explicit. This is, right, this is the explicit expression. Okay?
That's an explicit ex expression because we have, right? We have the dependent variable on one side and the independent variable on the other side. Notice here, those two variables on the same side, okay? So when, when y'all go into calculus, whether it's applied calculus or the, um, the STEM level calculus, um, you're gonna be talking about um, explicit, how to take derivatives explicitly and how to take derivatives implicitly. So you, okay? so you have to get comfortable with this, okay? All right. Um, and just to reiterate what we from from what we discussed earlier, this is right, so this is just p, right? So p is a function of n. Okay, so p depends on n. All right, let's look at the next example. Example eight. Okay, so does this, okay, so does the equation okay, does this equation x squared plus y squared equals to one represent a function? with x as input and y as output. All right. So, so here, there, okay, um, we wanna know whether this is, um, whether this can be expressed as a function where X is the input, meaning that X is going to be treated as the independent variable and Y is the dependent variable, Y is output, right? Okay. By the way, this is, okay, um, this is the equation of a circle, right? Centered at the origin with radius one, okay? All right. So how do we answer this question? Well, we have to go back to the concept that we talked about, right? Um, uh, namely, um, what a, what a function is, okay? So we have to solve, right? So what we're gonna do is solve for y in terms of x, okay? Right, because why is that? Well, because y is, okay, y is the output and x is the input. So x is the independent variable, just like we did here. We wanna put p in terms of n, okay? n being the, right, the independent variable. So we're gonna solve for y, okay? So that means we're on y squared equals to one minus x squared. So subtract both sides, by, uh, subtract uh, both sides by minus x squared. And then again to, right, we wanna isolate y. So to do that, we had to take the square root of both sides So to undo that. So, um, so we're gonna take the square root of y squared. So we have to take the square root of both sides to be consistent. So that's gonna leave us with a y here Okay. And then we're going to have, okay, we need to put a plus or minus there. The reason is because when you, so uh, when you square, right, when you square this, okay, if it's positive, it's going to be this. If it's negative, negative squared is going to be this, okay? So negative squared is positive, okay? So, um, so that's why whenever you're taking the square root, you always need to include both cases, okay? So based on that, okay, right? Based on that, we ask, okay, is this a function? Is this a function in terms of X? Um, the answer is no, this is not a function. And the reason is, okay, so let's go back to this kind of diagram. So let's suppose that X is zero, okay? Uh, x is zero, okay? Or, yeah, let's say x is zero. And when we put in uh, zero, okay, we're gonna get, obviously here, one minus zero. When we take the square root, we get plus or minus one, okay? So we get plus one, 
and then we get minus one. Okay, so we found we found a we found a we found two ordered pairs that have the same input value. Okay, so namely, right, we have zero going to one and zero going to minus five. Okay, so for that, just for this, right, for this value, okay. So this has repeating, right? So remember that in the beginning, we said that anything that you, if anything behaves like this, this is not a function. So you have repeating values here, okay? Repeating input values. Zero goes to one and zero goes to negative one. So this is going to, so this has two outputs, okay? So this is not a function. This is not a function. Okay. So let's go back to let's look at the let's look at the visual. Uh, let's look at this um, as a visual. Okay. So or as a as a as a graph. Okay. So like I said um, before, this is just um, if you remember, this is just a circle centered at the origin with radius one. Uh, here I have minus one zero, one zero, zero comma one, and then zero comma negative one. Okay, so okay, so remember that this is one, so x and then zero is y, x is zero, okay, y is one, so zero one, minus one zero, and down here is zero negative one. So you get your circle here centered at the origin with radius one. Okay. So, okay. All right, so the, the top part, okay? So the plus part, that is, so the plus part is above, right? That's this part above the x-axis. So that is your positive part, okay? Let's see. That's the positive value, okay? See if I can use a different color for that. Okay. The, the, the negative part, because you have, so the Y values that are negative are below, right, the X axis. Okay. That is, that is corresponding to this part. Okay, so that's how the two pieces fit together, right? You have the top and the bottom. And by the way, the so um, the neutral part values are here on the x-axis. So when you put everything together, you get the full circle, okay? So sometimes we use in calculus, sometimes we're using, or depends on what we're working on, but sometimes we use the top part, sometimes we use the bottom part, okay? Right. Okay. So generally speaking, right, um, circles are not functions, okay? Great, we need to talk about the last thing, or second to last thing is one-to-one. -one. So let's define what a one-to-one -one function is.
So one to one function is obviously it's, it's a function, but with uh, with a special rule. It's a function. So it's a function in which each out, output value corresponds to exactly one input value. Okay, so it's, it's easier to describe this using one of those using those function diagrams. So here is my so everything here is domain range, right? So let's suppose we have okay, I'm just gonna put just some dots here. Okay, so one to one, right? One to one function. So carefully read this, right? So a one to one function is a function in which each output value, okay, so let's say each output value in here corresponds to exactly one. Okay, one, only one input value. So this is going to be this one, this one, this one, and this one, okay? So if you start here, right? So let's say you're standing here at this point, then there's only one, there's only one bridge connecting these two values, okay? So for, so, okay, so that means, right, there's only one direction you can go in for each, for each value in that set, okay? And so that means, uh, so that's a uh, what it means to be one for a function to be one to one. Okay. So one to one. Okay. Let me show you an example that's not one to one. So let's suppose we have something like this. Okay. So some some values there. And let's say we have four values. Okay, so let's say this one goes to here, this one goes to here, and this one goes to here and here. Okay, so now, okay, this point is okay. This one, you can, right, there's one, right, connecting to this point. So, right, so this point only has one road or one bridge here. This one and this one, that's fine. But here, this point, right? There's two options. You can either walk over this way or starting from here or the top part. So that violates the definition of one to one. So this is not, right? So this is not one to one. Okay. So not one to one. Okay. Okay. That's. All right, so that's what one-to-one -one means, okay? So it's a function which each output corresponds to exactly one input, okay? So this output corresponds to two inputs, okay? So it has to be only one, okay? And this is important. The, the, uh, this is going to be something uh, we're going to talk about later is the, we're going to talk about inverses, okay? Because if you, again, so if you, right, so here's our function going from here to here. So the inverse, right, think of the inverse as just the opposite direction. So it's going from here to here. So now use, right, so if you think about that, right, if you're going from here to here, this is not a function, right, because this, right, this input, right, again, we're going, if we go from, right, we're going backwards, right, going from here to here. So, so this input has two outputs. So that violates the definition of input, or sorry, violates the definition of a function. So one of the requirements for a function to have an inverse is that it has to be one-to-one, -one. okay? And we're going to, uh, we're gonna take a careful look at that. And we're gonna even, um, uh, I'll show you a technique, uh, given a function, uh, we can determine whether it's one-to-one -one or not, okay? By the way, okay, um, can you think of an example 
that, uh, or think of an example of a function that is not one to one. Think of an expression um, that is not one to one. Okay. Okay, so an example of a function that's not one-to-one -one is x squared. The reason, okay, the reason is this, okay? All right, if we, if we let X be equals to one, And let x be negative one. Well, if you plug them into x squared, right, we get the value of one. Okay, so that, right, that right, looks something like this. Okay, so, right, so it all it takes is just one. You just have to find one value that does this, and it automatic it automatically makes that function not one to one. Okay. So we found it. In fact, there's other, right? there are other values, right? Um, minus two and two, minus two and two go to four. So you have this right? output goes to two inputs here, okay? So, so x squared, because of this, right? x squared is not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so it's not one to one. So um, x squared. Um, so if we look at x squared in this way, it doesn't have an inverse. So what you have to do, or what we'll talk about later, is how can we, how can we figure out, or how can, is there a way to, is there a way to find the inverse of x squared? So what we have to do is we have to remove one of these. All right, so if I remove, let's say if I take out the minus one, now it becomes now it becomes one to one. And so this is this idea is called restricting the domain. And so we're gonna we're gonna get into more, we're gonna get um, we're gonna get into this later on when we get into finding the inverse function, because sometimes we may have to restrict the domain so that we are able to find the inverse or uh, or to come up with the inverse of a function. Okay. So that's Coming up later. Okay. All right. Okay. So lastly, um, uh, let's see. There is a yeah. So there's a um, a visual way, right? A really nice, um, really nice method. Right? Kind of a, it's a visual method. It's a visual technique to determine whether a function, whether it's a one-to-one -one function or a or a function itself. So first, I'm going to talk about. So the first one I'll talk about is the uh, horizontal line test. <laughs> horizontal line test. Okay. So that is a graphical way. It's a graphical way to determine whether a function is one to one. Or specifically a graph. Okay. So a graph, um, determine if a graph is one to one. Okay. So let me show you an example of that. So let's suppose I have, let's say we have x squared, since we just did, just worked it out. OK, 
So x squared is one of the basis functions that we're going to get into later on. Um, so if it, it looks like this, okay? It looks like um, this because if you have, right, so if we have zero, so zero, when x is zero, you get zero, and then at one, or at minus one, it's going to be one. At one, it's going to be one. So it generally looks like this. So let's suppose that is given, okay? So that's so that is the graph of, of x squared. That's what it looks like. So suppose that's given, and they want you to determine whether this graph is is one to one. So using the horizontal line test, okay. So basically, what it says is that if you if you you have your right, if you put your if you put the horizontal line as you move up and down, if it intersects. Right, if it intersects uh, more than one point, okay, then it's not, if it intersects more than one point, then it's not one to one. And we can clearly see that, right? So it's intersecting two values here. Okay? It's intersecting two, club, two values there, and so on. Okay? So it, it, right, so it doesn't, like I said, so I mean, it, it's, it's intersecting at various spots. Clearly, it's only intersecting at the bottom here at that one point. But um, like I said, it only takes one. It only takes one, uh, one line, right? It only takes one to mess everything up. Okay, so because of this, right, it's not a one-to-one -one function. And if you think about, um, if you think about this that we went through here, it makes sense, right? So when x is when y is one. So here is, let's say this is one, okay? You can see there's two, right? There's your two input values, right? So minus one goes to one, one goes to one. So there's two, right? So there's two coordinates here, okay? So minus one comma one, one comma one, okay? Right? Okay, so, right? So therefore, right, if, if the, right? So again, if the horizontal line is in, the horizontal line is intersecting the function anywhere, anywhere in the function. If it's intersecting at more than one point, more than one, okay, it's not a function. Okay, so here's here's another example. It's not a yeah. It's it's, a, it's not a one to one function. Right? Okay. All right. Let's say the graph looks like this. Okay, so that's x squared, and that is the graph that you see. This bottom one there is the square root of x. So again, we'll be uh, we'll be talking about these. All right. Uh, all right, let's see. Okay, so if we look at the horizontal lines that go through here, I'll, I'll just draw a few of them. You can clearly see that it's only intersecting at one point, no matter Right, no matter where it is, okay, because of the way this curve is behaving. Okay. So this this function, right, the square root of x is a one-to-one -one function. Okay. Okay, so this is one to one. And this is not one to one. I hope, I hope that you can see the difference there. Okay. Okay. So horizontal line test. Okay. The other, uh, the other kind of line test is what's called the vertical line test. That is for, to, that is to determine whether a graph is, um, is a function or not.
Miracle line test. So it's a graphical way to determine if a graph okay, is, is a function. Okay. So all right, let's uh, go through an example of that. So I'll use um, the I'll use x squared. Yep. So a little bit. Well, okay. So that's. Right, what x squared looks like. Okay. So just like we had over here. So this time if we do a, so if we put a vertical line through this, okay. we can see that it's only going to intersect uh, at one, and for each one of these, it intersects at one point. So therefore, because therefore it's um, it's this function. This is a what y equals x squared is a function. Okay. Okay. So that is a function right? because it only intersects one point, and that's basically going back to the idea of the definition of a function, okay? For each, right, for each, uh, okay, for each input value, you're getting an output value, right? So for each input, right, you get an output here, okay? For each x, there's one, okay, in this case, okay? So let me show you an example that's not a function, okay? So something, let's say we have something like this. By the way, whenever you're doing, um, if you're asked to sketch something at the homework or if it's on exam, okay, um, for whatever reason, right, for whatever purpose, okay, you should always, always label your axis, okay? So always try to get into the habit of doing that because there are some, um, especially, so there may be, you know, some, you know, sometimes uh, it's, uh, professors do take off points if you don't label correctly. Okay. And it's it's a good habit to do anyway, okay? Because like I said, we don't always use X and Y. So if you don't have the letters here, how do you know what variables you're using, okay? So it's very important to always try to get in the habit of that, you know, try to, yeah, try to get into uh, into the habit of doing that, okay? And that will, that will help you, that will help you down the road, okay? All right, so um, let's look at another function. Um, that's, or sorry, another graph determine whether it's not a function. Okay. So something like this. Something really bizarre. Yeah. Okay. So this time, okay, and again, again, it only takes one, it only takes, um, you know, one, uh, it only takes one to, to mess everything up. So if I draw, right, so if we draw a vertical line here, okay, notice that it's intersecting three, three points on this graph, okay? Over here, right, for no matter where it's placed, it's only intersecting one. So here we found, right, we found a, we found a, a part where this line, this vertical line is intersecting at three points. So therefore, this is not a function, okay? This kind of graph. So it's not a function. And that's also, right, you can also tell with circles, right? Circles are not functions, um, right? They, 
circles. Um, the vertical line test fails for circles. And the same thing for the one-to-one, the one -one, right? They're not one-to-one. -one. They fail the horizontal line test. So circles are not, right? So circles are not functions. And so therefore, they're not one-to-one -one either, okay? All right. Um, so I think we've got to, yeah, so we got to the last topic, okay? So this is all in 1.1. Um, so make sure, you know, you go through the problems and you actually do them, right? Um, and you think about, as you go through the problems, think about the concepts that's, uh, that's being discussed in this video. And I encourage you to go through the examples in the, um, in the sections, okay? Um, there's plenty of examples there. And, and, and all my notes, these notes, okay? Uh, these notes that I have here, um, those are in... Um, those are in Canvas, okay? And if you don't understand something, please let me know, okay? Come by the Mass Center, right? Um, remember, I have uh, I have the office hours, right, in the, in the Mass Center. Um, there's also, uh, we have uh, tutors there that can help you, okay? So, so you know, take advantage of this chapter. chapter like I said, so chapter one is very important. It's, it's, it's relatively the easiest um, uh, material, right, out of everything that we're going to cover. In this course. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to stop here and uh, I'll see y'all next time.